Today's episode is sponsored by Cuba Cola, now the nutrition of vitamin B1. Visit their website and use the code word DREADFUL to get half of your first case today. Now, on with the show. Well, Mr. Ned Burns, we don't usually unveil results personally, however, our assessment shows that you possess no superpowers, no skills of any kind, in fact, and you've listed your biggest personal accomplishment as having a YouTube channel. I will be frank, I have never met anyone less qualified to join Youngblood in my entire life. What are you doing here? Oh uh, well, I saw the sign and I thought it stood for yogurt, so um, I'll just, I'll, I'll just go. Please. Bad art, too many characters, not enough character, non-existent storylines, and really, really bad art. These are the qualities that made Youngblood, the Image Comics launch title by supposed artist Rob Liefeld, one of the most infamous and reviled comic books of all time. It hasn't always been obvious, but the whole point of this show has always been to praise works that I love. Am I saying that I have a soft spot for this series? Yes! I know! Youngblood really is a superhero comic, because it won't stay dead. In my first 10 years of reading comics, it was revived three times. Today, we're specifically going back to 2008. You might want to brace yourselves. Let's put this to science. What? Ah, my eyes! It doesn't hurt my eyes! They're fine! It's Youngblood. The next generation of heroes are back. Led by ex-Special Forces operative Shaft, an archer so skilled, string is a four-letter word. Following in his stead are the best of the best. Starting with Cougar, civilized manimal and proud member of Wolverine Clones Anonymous. Die Hard, Nazi busting battle cyborg. His crotch is known to kill. Bad Rock, team turned titan and the closest thing this team has to a mascot. Next is Johnny Panic, laid back illusionist and the first post postmodern superhero. I don't know what that means. And finally, Doc Rocket, fastest woman alive and my personal favorite. I wonder why that is. Oh. So, um... The therapy isn't working. Warriors. Soldiers. Heroes. Banding together under the name Once Infamous, these extraordinary individuals have one mission. Bring in the 15 to 45 demographic every weekday at 8, only on MTV. So wait, you're telling me this is something I have to watch on my video game projector? What year is this? Wonderful, wonderful, excellent work, my boy. That was good. Mr. Fox, CEO of Cuba Cola, hi. I'm filming. That you most assuredly are. However, if I were to make one minor suggestion. <laughs> well, that's why we have you, my boy. Your reviewer magic gets the world thirsty for Cuba. And then... I get it, it's demand, then supply, that is an idea, sir. Like a fox. Cuba Cola, now with zero sugar. Youngblood are reality TV stars now. Superhero celebrities were always a part of Youngblood's thing, it's just that the rest of Youngblood's thing was... not great. However, writer Joe Casey obviously saw that it was a worthwhile concept that the original just didn't quite reach because their arms looked like this. Being more of a specialized soldier type, Shaft isn't exactly taking to the new direction. So, allowed this warning. Species in danger. Uh, it's too early for this. Oh! 
but what is a superhero team without something to punch? Enter Mayhem Inc. This band of bad news is led by Mr. Geiger, who used to look like this. Joining him are Gage, whose power appears to be owning a cool gun. Poppy, whose power is Pheromones. Blackrock, who I think might be Waluigi's Hulk form. Warwolf, who has the best supervillain name ever, fight me Robert. And Brandex, who just can't compete with the refreshing taste of Cuba Cola. God Cuba? Doubt it. Don't worry, these guys are all part of a show. I mean, they, they are real supervillains, but they're on the payroll now as well. You might think it's a remarkable act of idiocy turning actual murderers and megalomaniacs into TV stars, but they're under a very strict contract, so I'm sure they'll behave. Now, technically speaking, that does not violate his contract. Don't let the hyperbole get to you. This is straight out of Vince McMahon's playbook. So a build-up so terrible, nobody cares about the payoff. All right, we've got the heroes, we've got the villains, and we've got the cameras rolling. You guys gonna punch some bad guys or what? I think you and I need to talk about what a punch is. Also. That was freaking awesome! But we could probably use a better angle. Could you maybe do that again? Sure thing, just one second. Oh, damn. That's probably nothing. Just take it easy for a few days and try not to fall from any more high places, okay? Are you kidding me? He's not kidding me. Uh, Charles, could you whip this punk back into shape? Well, I guess he got the shaft. What? Well, that's okay. These are superheroes. There's always one extra laying around. Meet Task, the new team leader. He's a bit like Shaft, but... with swords. The swords don't need string either. The team is pretty pissed that Shaft's been replaced right out the gate. But not with Task himself. They're professional about it. With him on board, Doc Rocket gets on Task right away. More importantly, think about the new endorsement deals. What the hell is this? Well, I just read the most interesting pie chart. Did you know that women score 20% higher? You can't focus test me out of my own show. Get rid of her! Okay, Jack. Quick bit of praise to artist Derek Donovan. Task originally looked like this. Making him look more like Shaft somehow made him seem more distinct. Die Hard 2, actually. His horrible 90s look was improved by giving him a skull for a head. How does that work? Ratings are still good, but there's still a trust issue with the public. How you gonna fix it? Mostly figured I could wire this guy up, create a few hurricanes, you know, see how that works out. You know, I'm starting to think that the government guy might be a part of something evil. Also, he built a super weapon. As with all things in life, young blood turns out to be a government conspiracy. Step one, public falls in love with heroes. Step two, public cheers as heroes bulldoze the Middle East. You see, there was this little incident back there you might have heard. If only Shaft was still alive! Hey, still alive. Hooray! Hey, who's your friend? She seems nice. They labelled me Scion for. That is all I share with my genetic elder. They all assumed I would inherit his madness, but to bring about the cosmic apocalypse, I have no such desires. That made me an outcast from my own bloodline. Mark me for dead by his hand. Cuba Cola, Cuba 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 Cola, Cuba 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 Cola, Cuba 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 Cola. The gist is that her dad, a former hero named Space Hunter, is coming to Earth, and basically after that, everyone dies. It's bad. Sharp brings both these revelations to the others, asking them to give up their newfound fortune and fame to fight the real monsters. Typically enough. They say yes, because they didn't pull on those tights to go on talk shows or date supermodels. They're here to save the world, because they're the next generation of heroes. Unfortunately, he left one invite on the table, so now Task has to fight Mayhem Inc. on his own. Thankfully, he is so tough, he can take them all on single-handedly. I'm just kidding, it's more like this. So, no young blood, no conspiracy, right? 
If only. You know, I'm just thinking, we can't be more than 10 episodes into this show and the whole team's been replaced. Its most popular member was put out of commission by episode 2, and they still haven't delivered on the big showdown with their arch enemies. This week on Youngblood, Sentinel and Spike find themselves with- That's ham, ladies and gentlemen. That said, I do like this group as well. Everyone's pretty pissed with their circumstances, except for this guy Jam, and Sundance who probably isn't even fully aware of where she is right now. This man is some sort of royalty? Please vacate the planet. You are too good for us, we will ruin you. So just to recap, now they've got a government conspiracy, mayhem ink, and an intergalactic threat to look forward to. I think Team Old Blood needs a moment to kick back, crack open a Kuba and watch some TV themselves. And now we've got the televillain. Anyone else want to join in? Deadpool? You got beef? Crypto? What about you? John Byrne? King Radical? We good? Good. I think I can wager a guess, but what's your deal? In 1956, some sort of accident gave him the ability to teleport via TV signals. In addition, he can enter TV shows and actually affect the fictional narratives. And in the age of TiVo, personally I can't think of a better time to put the televillain back on the map. And at last we see the entire problem writing a series around modern trends like this. In a year, all this stuff is going to be outdated. You just know that if this had been made five years later, he'd be ranting about YouTube or Netflix. A villain armed with TiVo, The Jam on American Idol, The War on Terror, Bad Rock on Jay Leno, Scion in Oprah. Like, actually trapped in a broadcast of the show, not, like, literally. Whatever year this came out, wasn't this one. Remember Yahoo? No, you don't. And don't go fibbing and tell me you do, because, because, oh no, I can tell. I get that we're trying to make fun of this culture and its obsession with celebrity, but at the same time, we are the ones spending all this time on celebrity cameos. At what point does satire cease to be satire and simply become what it's satirizing? You know, this would be the perfect opportunity for a celebrity cameo. Uh, hey Lingar, I'm doing a Youngblood comic, you wanna help out? How was that? It wouldn't be quite so bad, except the story moves at a leisurely pace. Notice I haven't mentioned Cougar since the start of the video, because apparently Bill Mayer needed that screen time more to hit on Doc Rocket. As you can probably tell, there's a lot of stuff to cram into 20 pages per issue, so while not a lot happens, a lot is happening. Say, what's Team New Blood up to? For something that updates monthly, it's frustrating but not necessarily unusual. And hey, I bought every issue so clearly they were doing something right. Joe Casey and Derek Donovan turn Youngblood into something I actively wanted to read. The horse is long since dead, but I earnestly think that deserves an award. And if you earnestly believe that we as a people are too harsh on Robert Liefeld, and this isn't your young blood, he starts writing a backup story as of issue 8. Everybody wins! Unless you happen to live on Earth. I demand your pardon. Our target is an old enemy, Cybernet. They're the Cobra to our G.I. Joes. We always kick their ass in the end. That was... not what was happening. I get paid to crush the enemy by any means necessary. Not anymore you don't. Well obviously I've made a mistake here because this is... this is clearly Liefeld's backup story. No, this is the backup. Both sides of the backup. Now this is a question I don't think I should need to ask, but WHERE IS THE F***ING COMIC?! Space Hunter? Mayhem Inc? You were hiding from the government?! Guys, hello?! A short time back, Badrock was rendered inactive. Vulnerable. He turned a corner. The doctor said it was his version of puberty. So is this a separate continuity or a time skip? Because regardless of which it is... WHAT?! 
This is just young blood. This is everything we had moved away from. I take it back. Nobody wins. What the hell happened here? Well, see, I had a better idea. In what way is this better? Because I've packed in so much action into this baby that you're gonna need full page spreads and splash pages by the ass load just to fit it all in. Drawing is hard. Well, Liefeld didn't actually draw or write the new backup story, so maybe that's okay. Let's see what happens. Barack Obama sends a guy called the Free Agent to fight in the Middle East. That is the thing we were trying to prevent this whole time. <sighs> the story arc of Young Blood Volume 4 saw no conclusion and no further issues were produced after Liefeld's take on issue 9. It is unknown why the series ended like this, however, based off the man's past behaviour and the comments of artist Derek Donovan, Liefeld may have simply felt he had a better vision for the series, and then immediately lost interest. You know, a wise man once said, he might be your father, but he ain't your daddy. That's my theory at least. The ending of this comic has haunted me for years, and the real answer may never- OH GOOD GOD! Ah, I see you've met the Warfather! Yes, he tried to kill me! Yes, in the Miss Marvel video, I'm sure there'll be a link in the description. Now, I'm sure you're very curious- Why isn't he dead? He died! Who, who's under that mask? See, that Liefeld character was right. Action sells. You two are going to fight for publicity for Kubacola! Look, I don't want to do this anymore. He's got a gun. And you've got a Cuba. It's not even real. It will be. Warfather, do something violent. That's the one good thing you've ever done. Kuba Cola may not exist, but Patreon does, and you can become my sponsor there if you liked what you just saw. We're doing payments per video, so it's not much, but it's a good incentive to get me off my butt to make some new content. For now, stay positive, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>